Hey guys, Dib the Awesome here to give you yet another maze informational video uh, where we talk about the latest maze, how do you do mazes, and uh, you know, review the rewards. <laughs> All that jazz. Alright, so I guess we'll just start off by how you do the maze and then we'll talk about the rewards. So how you do mazes is it's basically you collect every four hours. Basically you get coins for collecting gold you get coins for collecting food, you get coins for breeding and hatching, that's important, breeding and hatching, so you go and breed a uh, Thunder Eagle times Thunder Eagle, uh, it's every four, you know, that's what I personally do, uh, because it is, it takes exactly four hours to do them, uh, if you perchance don't get the said combination, just breed a, or like you don't get your 50 coins, uh, you should be getting 50 coins from the breeding and the hatching, so if you don't get 50 from uh, both sources, breed a pandakin times a pandakin. That helps. Uh, I don't know if I said that you get coins for feeding, but you do get coins for feeding too. And that happens every four hours. This is the easiest, like, you know, honestly, this is the easiest event to get monsters. <laughs> like, this is as free to play as it gets. You just collect coins, log in. And get stuff. Uh, so yeah, what's with the demonic maze here? This is actually... Uh, I, I didn't really bring it up uh, in the beginning of this video. But I'm really happy that this maze is out. Because it was, you know, leaked for the longest of time. Like all these monsters, all these new demon monsters. The Legion, the Inheritor, and the Sulfagus. Uh, they've been out for ages. <laughs> in terms of the, in terms of the, just the book. But the event itself, never. It's, it's, it's just been a really, really long... Uh, you know, wait for it. It's been so long, and I don't even think people are hyped about it that much anymore. <laughs> like people, it's it's one of those situations where everybody was hyped at the leaks, but then it never. It, it was kind of like the learning in. It's like the learning in kind of situation here because everyone was really excited about learning, in. and then for the longest of time they never released him. He was in the book for the longest of time. And then he was officially re released on team races, and the hype just died. <laughs> like, the hype for him just, like, it was like, whew, not interested anymore. Uh, in the situation here where you can't even get one of the two new legendaries, uh, because Legion costs, like, five, co you know, keys, has, like, you know, like, it's, like, five keys before you can even do the, you know, the maze, so that's pretty much re unrealistic. <laughs> for it pretty much. I don't know if he's going to be doable within the 14 days given. I think you can get up to rabies personally if you try. Uh, but yeah, well, we're going to talk about the uh, the monsters here. The Inheritor, I will say, is a really, really good monster. Like, just straight up. Uh, we'll, we'll get to him a bit, but just to, so you guys know, he's, theoretically speaking, you know, he was... You could get him in the chest, so he, in all honesty, he is... Basically the, you know, first fire monster that denies in the game. Although uh, Viper Hotep was the first officially released one. Like, it was re released in a re event. Uh, and the only way you could get Inheritor or the Legion was really just pulling them from the random legendary boxes. Because the random legendary boxes, uh, you get one from... Yeah, you get any one of that specific type in that, uh, you know, rarity category of a legendary monster. So, if you were pulling dark chests, you might have a chance to get Legion. If you were pulling the fire chest, you might have a chance to get an Inheritor. Uh, but yeah, let's just talk about the prices here. Uh, Postagarf. Uh, I really like this monster. AoE bleeding, AoE poison. Really low cooldown monster. And it has the abomination trait. Basically, it cannot be possessed and it cannot be uh, under bleeding or nightmares. It's a really good trait and it's a really good counter to Ophiuchus. <laughs> Everybody loves running Ophiuchus in Epic Wars. It is highly recommended to uh, rank this monster up. He's just really good against comps that really rely on that two turn possession. It's very, it's very anti. Uh, Ophiuchus, I believe it's in the same books. Oh, actually, he's in more books, too, so that's even more of a reason. <laughs> that's is 100% more of a reason why I should use Postagarf, because he's also in more books. He's also in more books than Ophiuchus. Uh, 
I do like Ophiuchus's trait setup, though. I, I, I like any, in all honesty, I like anything that can wear a chest plate. I really like the chest plate relic, and I think it's one of the best relics in the game. Uh, so it is nice to see that Ophiuchus has it, but uh, this one can use a sword and a trap, so you could run the stamina draining trap with the shield procking sword, you know, the ice breaking great sword. Uh, you'd have to have other monsters to proc that. Uh, you, you know, they have to freeze or stun them so I could get the proc off, but for the most part, yeah, it works. Uh, it, it gives them sustain and all that jazz. Uh, really, really good epic in all honesty. So, Fagus, this is basically, <laughs> this is one of the newest, uh, demon monsters. This is the epic one out of three. This is the epic, uh, demon. Has the newest trait, demon, which makes you 20% less likely to get hit by a deny, and you're immune to burning and ignition, I believe. You're immune to those kind of DOTs, and that can be really, really helpful in Fire Wars, <laughs> which it is, it, which it is part of the fire category so he is good in fire wars or you know epics that you know wars that require epics but you're dealing with fire monsters that's that's got it going for it he can also use really really helpful relics that help with his setup i think his situation was he was basically the uh ma ma well not magic the fire version of invidia <laughs> uh his main spiel is stamina leaks i, I think his whole thing was just leaking stamina so to be able to hold a draining mask and a amulet that increases sustainability or refresh his mana is really helpful i don't know if this mo epic is as good as other monsters in the game but i'm supposing since it can you know get 20 percent less likely chance to get denied when there's a bunch of you know epics that like Nautilus or a Fucus or a Growler that can be really good <laughs> uh, it, it just situational really but yeah it's it, it's a I don't really know t if it's too good try it out if you like it it's good if you don't like it you know if it, it, does, it doesn't do you much good then there's your you know answer from me <laughs> it's probably not good but uh, but I, I do believe his whole thing was stamina leaking. I think he did stamina regen. He was, he's really stamina oriented. I remember him being a stamina oriented epic. Oh, Fucus, this is the man of the epics. This is the favorite epic of every man, every child, <laughs> every man, every child, every uh, gal, every lady. Uh... Yeah, <laughs> this is Ophiuchus. Ophiuchus has a AoE two-turn possession, and he's one of the few epics you will actually see running full speed sometimes. This skill alone makes him very, very, very terrifying. It's something that you would think an epic would have in its alt. This guy has it as a basic skill. <laughs> and it's like on a three to four turn cooldown. Uh, it's, it's not too major because usually if you're running full speed it, it it gets a constant turn in so it's not too bad and when you possess something for two turns you don't really have to worry about much stuff he also had a aoe bleeding single target poisons uh it was either bleeding or nightmares for that other aoe uh but beyond you know there's the possession he does dot's his alt's actually a three dot proc uh, an, on an AoE scaling, where he bleeds, poisons, and nightmares. I've actually lost some games because of this. <laughs> it's a it's a really good AoE, and the fact you can hold like a chest plate is busted. Chest plates make you really really tanky. Uh, basically, in a let's say in a scenario you got like the heavy duty relic, uh, heavy duty chest plate relic, uh, and you just got hit by an AoE that that instantly procs. <laughs> <laughs> like it says whenever you get hit so if you get hit by a aoe which doesn't do much damage to begin with you basically proc the you know they, they proc your effect you get like a you know points value of armor depending on how high the level of the relic is uh, i have mine at 30 so 25 per proc essentially it's fifty thousand armor or like fifty thousand shield they can't remove they have to actually burst that down and that can be really really helpful in keeping this you know your epics whatever have you Whatever, whatever could hold a chest plate alive. It's really, really good, especially on deniers. Deniers, it's it's kind of busted with deniers. I see why you see like 
a lot of egg eaters on defense. Egg eater is like a legendary monster with really, really low base speed. But since his control is really good and it's his, uh, you know, overall, you know, productivity is increased with the help of the being able to hold a chest plate relic, he's actually one of the more terrifying defense monsters in the game. <laughs> it, it makes him really, really, really tanky. And if you're on a heavy duty chest plate on this thing, you'll probably see the same results if they didn't bring anything uh, that could do effective damage to like fire and light. Uh, fire is pretty highly likely, uh, but light, light is less likely. Because a lot of people like running light supports over light attackers. Vanitas. This is the first legendary you may of which you may obtain uh, if you choose to just go down the list. Uh, Vanitas. Vanitas here. Vanitas can hold a mask and a shield relic. Masks are very, very versatile. <laughs> you can do so much with masks. You can run healing masks. You can run energy renewal masks. You can run uh, stamina draining masks. You can run healing it's it's just really good self utility uh encounter utility it's it's really 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 good uh shields shields is uh it, it's shields are more so uh a team utility thing so he has self utility and has team utility in terms of his relics and that's really really nice uh I don't know how well he could really use it, except Tenacity Shield. I, I think uh, just outside Tenacity Shield, really, is where you'll see, mo for the most part, where the shield procs. Because, tena I mean, the shields in general, uh, like the silver ones proc on specific status, like, you know, deny effects, like possession, and everyone likes running the possession the most because it procs twice for some reason. <laughs> like, the, the stun and the freezing silver... Shield relics don't proc twice, they only proc once, and the possession one, you know, procs twice. And since you're running something that's, you know, immune to possession, you know, if he's wielding that, uh, there's not much, like, overall utility. So you'd have to run one of the lower end shields for silvers if you don't have tenacity shield, and that's not really good. Uh, he wouldn't really be able to make much use of the vitality shield if he's in a pickle. Because his self buff uh, kind of gets in the way of that. Basically, with his self buff, uh, I, I think he's got. I, in all honesty, I think Vanitas is one of the best mirror mirror monsters in the game, because he's immune to possession. And if you didn't know the thing with possession, if you are by any means possessed while having mirror mirror up, it actually doesn't reflect the you know the AO, you know let's say you got like AOE possessed. Uh, and you you have mirror mirror up. Let's say you're using like an agursus, right? You you get possessed, and you think, oh hey, now I'm just gonna reflect that possession back on my enemies. Wrong, is it 100% wrong? It goes back on you again because it's no longer your agursus. It's now the enemy's agursus, and the mirror mirror reflects the enemy. You know the enemy's attack back at them, and even though the enemy used that possession on you, the actual enemy. Now that the Agursus is on their side, it's going to reflect the AoE again, <laughs> back at, back on back on you. <laughs> so there's problems with Mirror Mirror. It's not 100% uh, good in a situation where you can possess the enemy. Uh, there's a lot of backlash to it. <laughs> um, but this is one of the better monsters to do that because he's naturally resisted to possession. So if he does, an AO, you know, if he does his own self-skill that Mirror Mirrors... Uh, he can he just reflects things back with no problem because he's immune to possession. If, if the enemy goes for like an AoE possession, uh, he will reflect that back at the enemy because he himself is immune to possession. He's, he can be controlled by possession. Uh, this does not count advanced possession, so Hackster can kind of get by this or anything with hacked or glitch, you know, glitches, what have you. Uh, that, that can kind of get by it, but for the most part, you get my point. Uh, it's a, it's a really good mirror mirror. The cost for this skill, however, the 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 downside to it, it sets you on fire, <laughs> and I think that can be fixed nowadays. Plus, with the the relics, I think you could run like the maybe you could run the uh, freeze shield because he can actually give himself immune to stun too. I didn't I didn't really mention the rest of his kit yet, but he also has a skill that gives him immune to stun. So basically, he can only ever be bothered by freezing. Uh, if you had allowed him to move and he did the immune to stun skill, so you can't really stun him and you can't really possess him. Uh, except with, you know, the advanced denies. 
so basically the, the thing you have left is freezing. Uh, so I imagine a lot of people are going to run, if they don't have tenacity shield or like the friendship shield, uh, they're more than likely going to run this, the shield that gives you a uh, shield on freeze. And I think that would really help or that would be really good. Especially if you had multiple uh, shield, running multiple of those, that would be coming in handy. Uh, what else does he have? He has an AOE 40 damage magic skill. Not not very high on magic damage, or like not magic damage, uh, AOE damage there. Uh, his, he's got a 65 magic based skill on like a one turn cooldown. It's really nice. <laughs> and the immune to stun move I was talking about, yeah, that's spammable. So he has a spammable immunity to stun. He can never really be stunned. I will say between Vanitas and Rabies here, I think he's the better one of the two. I would pick him up over Rabies. He is a thousand times more useful in terms of utility uh, and what he can bring to the table. Alrighty, now we get to a boy, Rabies. Now I will say, like before we start this up, I will say Relics did kind of save this monster. I, I will say that Relics basically improved what he could actually do uh, since the the introduction of Relics. Uh, but basically, Rabies was the last monster of the, you know, the original demonic. Well, that's not even demonic. It was the Seven Deadly Sins. Yeah, Seven de Seven Deadly Sins maze. Uh words and uh, oh, oh like a lot of people were kind of upset about his moveset uh everybody loves this design this is one of the best one of the better designed monsters in the game and his moves are terrible <laughs> the cooldown's terrible uh self-hurting skills like he, he, was, he was meant to be a monster with high damage or not no high, not high damage high risk high reward but basically, you know, how they handled it in the end it was basically just more risks than rewards. <laughs> uh, it was basically prototype Baratagor because he doesn't actually have a damage AoE. All of his damage is mostly from his single target damage skills. And Baratagor does that a thousand times better. <laughs> uh, he doesn't actually have a 7... I, I always thought he had like a 70 or 75 damage skill. He actually only has a... Well, I, I think he has a 70. Yeah, his, his fire skill, I think, was 70 or... Either 70 or 65. Uh, but then the other... Yeah, he didn't have, like, too high of a scaling. Like, he has, like, a 60 uh, damage skill. I do believe he had a 45, that at least that I run. Uh, and he has an AoE that ignites. Not, not ignites, but, you know, burns. And then applies sticky lava. So that improves his, you know, single target fire damage. Uh, but moral of the story is he just doesn't have a uh, AOE damage gun. I think that's what killed him the most, <laughs> besides his self-harm. Uh, but since the introduction of Relics again, uh, he can kind of surpass that. He does, it's not going to be mattered too much that it does damage to him. Because you could run things like the Ice Breaking Greatsword, which gives you shield uh, whenever you hit a stunned or a frozen target. Uh, and you could also run the Healing Mask, to give you life back when you've dropped below the threshold point, so like 50% for the healing mask, and you get a lot of healing out of it, you pretty much get all your life back. There are ways to keep him alive, so you should be able to run smoother nowadays if once you get those relics. Uh, I'd still probably pick him up too. Like, like I, I think this was the point where the most doable, if anything, you could pick up. Probably rabies. Yeah, I don't think you can pick up the last two monsters, but I know for sure you can probably pick up uh, all the epics, Vanitas and rabies. If anything, rabies is a maybe at that point. Uh, another reason why you should go for it is because his path actually <laughs> his path actually has a gold relic. Uh, you should totally go for that. That is a hundred percent something you should do. Uh, so totally go on the. Uh, rabies path here it is worth it uh, i actually don't know the prices but i'm assuming this rabies is doable if you actually try really really hard in this event uh and at least get at least one 30 percent discount so keep an eye out for the discounts it's very important that you do Alrighty, legion here legion my boy my home dog my home slice uh this is a support monster it's a de debuffer pretty much 
that also removes negative effects from your team. Uh, run this thing full spe team speed. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that's what I'm just going to say uh, straight up the bat. I don't believe he had an AoE random control effect, but he does have a single target random control effect skill. He did have that. Uh, he has a bunch of one random status effect AoEs. Like, I think he had two. Uh, very, very support oriented in terms of just removing negative effects and applying them. That's that's really all he does. Uh, basically, uh, a nerfed, like, two random negative effect monster, but he has the ability to remove negative effects from his team. It's a very utilitative monster. Very support debuff oriented. Uh, I, I think he's pretty cool. I would around him. In some in some situations, he is a really nice monster. Uh, between him and the Inheritor, uh, though, if I had to choose, I, I would still pick up Inheritor because the relics on Inheritor are awesome. <laughs> the, like the this monster is just dumb, and we're gonna talk about him right now. The Inheritor, my boys, gals, man and ladies, uh, men's and <laughs> men's and ladies. Uh, this is a really good monster. He has a AOE possession. It do, it doesn't while well, it doesn't do any damage. It is a really really good against his element because a lot of his the monsters in the fire category are immune to like burning or stun or like you know just have the the percent chance not to get denied. Period. Very very good against his category. Very very good monster. Runs the CD speed so he he runs the four twelve speed. That is the lowest acceptable speed by the community. So if you wanted to run that, go for it. <laughs> and in all honesty, I think if it was like three, if it was like um, Egg Eater speed, like 3,399, I think people would could still run it as a Deny Monster since you know, they run you know, Egg Eater. And that works well too still. However, you probably couldn't pull it as off as well uh, because he, do he doesn't apply blind with his DOTs. He has a lot of DOTs, you know, skills and really good base damage, uh, but he doesn't apply any blinds. But he again, he does. You know, he has that AOE deny, and he has a lot of base. You know, his damage is really high base damage. Uh, DOTs. He has an AOE burn and uh, ignite on a zero turn cooldown. I believe it's it's just really dumb. <laughs> it is. It's a really really good monster, and this justification of why it's last because it's that good. Uh, and his relics are awesome. The relics on this monster are really really good. I, I think for the most part, though, people are gonna run him damage, and that's totally justifiable it is the thing you do uh but just since the uh since the category is just so uninvolved since fire itself has never really had much deny before I, i'd probably you know make it a deny i think that's competitively viable <laughs> to have a fire denier that's that's just capable of possession that's that's really good I also like the fact that this thing is in three books and it's part of the winged book the wing book has always been trash and you should probably think about getting this monster in the future when it uh the cell trailers come out they always they always do cell trailers uh and they'll probably you know put these this monster cells in the next maze event so I'll just save up the cells watch all the trailers for that uh and totally get this monster because he is worth it it's part of three books and specifically one of the more books that you'd probably want a better monster in <laughs> there's a lot of old like, not very good monsters in the winked category. Uh, and you should pick this one up because he has really, really good moves. And his relic slots are awesome. He has a essence slot, so you could put, like, Ariel's essence or, like, any of the healing essences on him. And it just gives him more sustainability. And then you got the chest plate relic or the armor relic. Uh, where you could run, like, heavy duty armor or, like... Uh, I, I think that was the, that, that's the, that in general is the best one, but, uh, there's also the Atum's Plate and the Heavy Duty, which is, well, I don't know, not Heavy Duty, but, like, there was, uh, what, what was it called? <laughs> like, uh, Relics. I to collect my treasure box here. Oh, hey, I got some bread cells. That's cool. Uh, it was called, I, um... I have it on my cryotan, actually. What's it called? This is Armor of Duty. Okay. <laughs> Heavy Duty and Armor of Duty. Uh, armor of You could run Armor of Duty, which gives you armor as soon as your turn starts. Though, I think Heavy Duty is still better. I think you should ju just opt to get Heavy Duty. 
heavy duty here, which is uh, procs every time you get hit, and it's a total of twice. So basically, at thir level 30, you get like 50,000 <laughs> armor that can't be removed. You have to actually, uh, at least by status effects, you have to actually do the damage. It is Situationally, it is really, really good. It is such a great relic. You should run it. It is so, it's so good. Uh, on tanks and on deniers. It's really good on deniers. This is dumb. <laughs> it basically saves deniers' life if you were going to overburst them. There's there's still like that small chance, you know, a really good chance they'll survive the hit from a damage dealer that's unboosted or what have you. If it's a scenario where they can't double damage, uh, it, it's a very good tool to survive, and he's able to do so. It is a really, really nice thing. Uh, that's it for this video. Let me know if this was helpful. <laughs> Let me know if you found my insight on the monsters helpful or cool. I think I mumbled a bit quite a quite a few times. <laughs> uh, but overall, I think this event's really good. Oh, by the way, one more thing. They're also going to have a secret path monster for this event, and it's going to be Barbatos. Barbatos has a self-skill that gives him double damage, and he has like a 90 damage uh, you know, it's a basic single target skill, but does 90 damage. I, I'm running my don't, don't do this. <laughs> I, I was, uh, I was in need of coins during an event. Just don't, don't look at that build. Uh, but <laughs> it wasn't, it's not even a build. It's just a bunch of gold runes. Uh, this is a really good monster. It's just, I, I was working on an event. <laughs> don't, don't, don't look at me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's the, he has the, uh, an extra turn skill gives him double damage and stamina regen. It's a really broken buff. One of the best self buffs in the game. And he has like a zero turn cooldown 90 damage skill. It's just dumb. <laughs> it's, it's a really, really good damage dealer. Out of style, but he he is really good. Like, not many people like just like it's kind of like a stale play, play style i guess i don't know but he is, he is dumb he is he is really good his damage is he's one of the best single target damage dealers in the game still to this day just because of how good the base scaling of that skill is it, 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 he doesn't even have the highest base power anymore and, and he's still regarded as one of the best damage dealers in the game because of the the combo there he just does so much damage it's so good uh, you can also hold a mask and, you know, sword, and we already talked about the utility in that. It's really, really good utility. He also doesn't have a trait, really. He has immune to nightmares. Garbage. But again, he's, he's, he's just really good in damage. It's a really good monster. Uh, that is it for this video. Again, I already said everything. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, have an awesome day. I'm Dib the Awesome, and I'll catch you guys later.